Now, the rape and murder of a 27-year-old woman in India's southern city of Hyderabad is causing outrage. Police have detained four men after finding the burnt body of the veterinarian under a bridge. Priyanka Reddy was taken to a secluded area and gang-raped before her body was doused in fuel. It was found on Thursday morning. She had called her family earlier to say her motorbike had a flat tire. The girl had returned from her workplace and was on her way to see a doctor. She had parked her scooter near the toll plaza and when she was returning, a stranger approached her to tell her its tyre was punctured. She had then called her sister and then her mobile phone was switched off. We are investigating all these angles and now we have some evidence. Uh, the Indian government has toughened some of its laws to reduce crimes against women following the rape of a woman on a bus in 2012. In 2013, the prison term for rapists was doubled to 20 years. Actions, including voyeurism, stalking and trafficking of women, were also classified as offences. And Parliament voted to lower the age suspects could be tried for rape and other sexual offences from 18 to 16. But the latest figures show nearly 39,000 women were raped in India in 2016, including more than 2,000 girls under the age of 12. Kavita Krishnan is secretary of the All India Progressive Women's Association. She joins us via Skype now from New Delhi. Thanks very much uh, for being with us. Um, now, there, has, there was this case, case back in, in 2012 which, which caused a huge amount of outrage, not, in, not only in India but throughout the world. Uh, uh, this woman who was, who was gang raped uh, on a bus yeah. and, and died from her injuries. And so since then... They've, they've toughened up the laws, at least on the face of it. But has it really made a difference? Because it would appear that it hasn't. Um, I want to say that, see, the recommendations that uh, the committee, which had been formed after our protests in 2012, had not just recommended changes in the law. In fact, some of the changes in the law that have been made have not been uh, recommended by that committee uh, or demanded by any of the women's groups, such as lowering the age um, at which you can try uh, juveniles as adults and so on. Those were not things we asked for. We never asked for the death penalty. The actual thing is that um, what the government should have done, those things which we were demanding, which is to make uh, the streets uh, safer for women, more street lights, more, uh, you know, a more women-friendly atmosphere where women are, do not feel judged for being out in public spaces and where you have a more gender-sensitive response from the police and the judiciary. This, unfortunately, has not followed. And uh, I would hold um, India's current government uh, squarely responsible for that, in part, in very large measure. But also, I would say that uh, even institutions like the judiciary, just a, a short while ago, you had a, a conviction for a rape which happened in, uh, with a student in Delhi. And uh, it, the, 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 the perpetrator was convicted. But from the uh, high court, he was acquitted and that acquittal was upheld by the Supreme Court on what basis? Saying that, oh, we believe this, uh, the victim when she says she said no, but her no was a feeble no, and a feeble no might mean a yes. This is actually something which the judiciary allowed. So this uh, contributes to a climate of impunity and victim blaming, which is extremely rampant in India even now. And uh, I think uh, probably in other parts of the world, I mean, if you read uh, Chanel Miller's recent book, know my name. Uh, I would say that what she goes through in the judicial system in the US and what uh, victims go through in the judicial system in India, they pretty much mirror each other. They are, it's, it, it, it's, it's as though the judiciary is interested in regulating women's sexuality and judging them rather than in you know, offering them justice. And so I think that all this contributes to a climate where uh, violence is becoming, um, you know, um, uh, in these incidents of violence keep happening. So how do you how do you change the culture there? Um, I mean, what you're talking about there is is you know what you said there this 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 culture of impunity, this attitude uh, towards women that it's often their fault, uh, that sort of thing. I mean, you know, you can toughen up the laws, but it takes a lot longer to change the the whole culture around it, doesn't it? Yes, and I, I don't think it's a matter of culture only in India. When I said culture, I think I meant a culture of impunity and a culture of tolerance for um, violation of consent, which um, I'm seeing in a lot of other places in the world and in India. 
And I also want to add that after this special incident, you can see that in the climate in India now, the specific thing that is kind of, uh, you know, peculiar to India right now is that you have a, um, a government which is fanning up um, tensions between Hindus and Muslims, and it's doing politics in that name. And so what happens is that such an incident happens, and a large part of the uh, response that is made by the uh, ruling uh, party and its supporters and so on, on media, social media, is to try and say, oh, of the four men arrested for this, one of them is Muslim, and so Muslims are the problem, rather than saying patriarchy is the problem. Disrespect for consent is the problem. Um, the fact that our governments are not doing enough to make our streets well lit and safer and more friendly for women to be out in large numbers, that is the problem. The fact that uh, your police encourages victim blaming is, that is the problem. You know, so there's an attempt to divert away from all of that. So if, if tougher laws are, so if, if tougher laws are already in place, what else can be done then? Yeah, as I said, I mean, uh, some of the recommendations that we uh, asked for and which were made were that, uh, for instance, the streets should be more made uh, more friendly to women, namely, um, you know, more women uh, out on the streets means the street is safer. And so you should have more street lights, more uh, activity on the streets. Instead of encouraging women to go back inside and not be outside, it should be right the opposite. So you sh your urban planners should be planning to make streets. The public transport was a big demand after 2012 because that uh, young woman was raped and killed when uh, she couldn't get a taxi or an auto and she uh, got into a bus which was driven by these people who killed her. And so we were demanding public transport, 24 into 7, safe public transport, which is publicly funded public transport, so you don't have to rely on private buses and so on. And that has simply not happened. The You know, there is no push to invest any money in that by any government in India. Um, and the current government especially is cutting back on funding for all these things. And so I think in terms of the support for victims and the investment in public, um, uh, and even in terms of if we want convictions to happen, if we want cases to be heard, if we don't want trials to go on for de years, even more than a decade, then you need the government to invest in more judges and more courts uh, so that, right. uh, you know, uh, cases don't drag on for years. But that has not happened either. Yeah. Good to get your uh, thoughts uh, on this, uh, Kavita Krishnan. Thanks very much.